also um, a, a class of as a friend of mine, yeah. is that right, Derek? Yeah. He is the yeah. 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 He might not be at the end of the evening. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's Derek Butler, the uh, Maidstone Mayor. And I must say, Derek is one of these people you will always see with a smile on his face. That's tonight as well, <laughs> yeah. I do hope. And, uh, and very, very charming, and also very, having worked with him on committees before, a very knowledgeable person. So, wrap him all up into one, <laughs> he's a decent one. <laughs> and we look forward to yeah. hearing you say a few words yeah. to us later on. Um, we've got one apology tonight from Tom, and also we've got the sad resignation of uh, Stephen Rice from the Parish Council. Um, I think we'd all like to say thank you to Stephen for the, for the hard work that he's put into this council on and off over the years and uh, wish him well with whatever he does on parish council nights. Yeah. So that takes us on to the... The, yes, the community warden, Martin, we've got a list for us. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I, I haven't got the crime figures, I think Amanda's got those. Yeah. Um, I, I did want to mention a couple of things, and they're both about dogs. Um, I've, I've been to a, a team meeting today, and a lot of my colleagues over towards the Tunbridge and Morling area are reporting a lot of um, dog nappings. And uh, I just wanted to raise it this evening. Um, the breeds that they're talking about mainly are sort of spaniel or gun dogs, and also some lurchers. Um, even, even to dogs being taken from gardens. So I just wanted to raise raise it. So if any of you have got dogs or you've got friends that have got dogs, just sort of mention to them that uh, although we haven't had much going on fairly locally recently, it is it happening over towards Tunbridge and Morden at the moment, and I just wanted to raise the profile of it. Um, the other thing is um, also about dogs, um, and this is happening locally and in Lenham as well. Um, we've had reports of um, a lot more dog fouling, which does tend to happen this year because of the time of year, because it's shorter days. Mm -hmm. But I've had a meeting with one of the enforcement officers from the council, um, and we've uh, we've stenciled some uh, advice signs on pavements in various places, uh, and I've put out some cards um, because we're trying to attract information. Uh, the councils of the police are only as good as the information we get. Um, and, I, and I was talking privately earlier on uh, um, that if someone's got some information, it can put me in the right place at the right time. If I actually witness somebody not clearing up after their dog and I challenge them, then if they refuse to pick it up, then I can make it a, a notebook entry uh, and I'll, I'll go to court and provide the evidence for the council if they want to follow it up. Yeah. That's great, well, thank you. But is there, we are going to be talking about dog bins later and, and the whole issue around dog fanning, which is almost an epidemic proportion across the borough. But thanks very much for feeding that back. Have you got yeah, two oh, questions? Two questions, two questions on dogs. Um, Firstly, uh, well, secondly, really, if you witness dog fouling, have you got the power to ask for a name and address? No. No. Okay. But well, I have got bags if they say they haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, I, I would then know what the dog owner looked like. I would also know what breed of dog. And that is information that the enforcement officers could give. So you can follow them. And I can follow them home. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so the, the first question was uh, in, in relation to um, dog thefts. I've been reading about dog nabbing for ransom. Is there any evidence of that um, locally? Not that, I'm, um, not that I'm aware of. Um, it, they're purely focusing on the dogs are being taken but there haven't been any sort of ransom demands for them, so I'm presuming that they're being used for either breeding or gun dogging. Right. Yeah. But it seems to be predominantly spaniels stroke gun dogs. Thank you. Um, there's been five reported crimes since the last meeting. Uh, oh, actually, no. He's done from December, from, from mid-December. So I would need to find out, actually, the first couple of weeks, didn't notice that. 
Um, criminal, criminal damage in church prison, theft of a motor vehicle in Tithe Mews, attempted burglary in Marley Road, criminal damage to hedge and fence in Fairborn Lane, and theft of tools from Saxon View. Um, there's been no reports of antisocial behaviour in the village. Um, they have had reports of suspect vehicles, especially in the rural lanes, so they've asked if you see any vehicles you're not happy with, if you can phone 101. Um, just a piece of news, um, we have Dave Rowley back as our PCSO, so that's good news. Um, and he's over the moon to be back. Um, he said, in the past I've always been able to count on your support and look forward to working with you again. So, okay. Thank you. So, now go on to the minutes of the last meeting. Oh, oh, sorry, we've got the minutes we've got with the public. So, but we're now going to a 15 minute for the public discussion. Um, if I could just ask if there's anybody <coughs> filming it, not that it matters if you are, it's just like so. I don't think there's any cameras up in here other than our one. Yeah. No, you're, you're no, no, you're fine. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you carry on. Everybody can carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about the dog fouling. Yes. Um, Really, I think I should be asking Martin, but how do we stand if we see someone fouling and not picking up? Would we be allowed to be to warn them and say, if you don't pick that up, I'll take your photograph? Um, as a citizen, you are allowed, as long as it is polite, to say exactly what you would like. But the only thing is, oh, this is just personal advice, this doesn't come from the parish council. If the person turns around and gets a little bit aggressive, just walk away from it. Mm. Um, if it's a person that you know that lives locally, I don't think there's any harm to say, look, you know, oh, did you notice that the, the dog's mm. fouled on the page? Sometimes it's the, the element of embarrassment, mm. but some people might get aggressive, and I wouldn't advocate anybody fronting anybody as much as you'd like to, you know, do something about it. Um, but it is a subject that we are going to yeah. address to see what Harwich are doing. I don't know what Martin could help at all on that. Um, I'd probably steer away from taking photographs because that's, um, you know, that, that, yeah. that takes you into a slightly uh, a different realm. But it, that, that's also more confrontational to say, oh, I don't know if you know, but you, the dog's just into the loo. Yeah. Um, if, if, and, and you quite rightly say, if someone's going to be antagonistic, just don't say anything else and walk away. You, you can always ring me. Um, if, if we know who it is and where it, where and when it's happening, as I said before, I, I can make a note of that and, and report that to the most Okay. Yeah. Well, we already give out dog bags, and we know we can name and shame the people that do it mm. as a regular dog walker, and even giving them bags. The next day, they do exactly the same. Mm. Yeah, so and I think I'm there are sort of ways and means of, of dealing with it, but obviously we've got more to talk about. But the dog mm -hmm. well, it, it comes to a point, how, how much opportunity do you give somebody mm -hmm. before it, it needs to be enforced? Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's, uh, I think, you know, caring kind of dog owners do the right thing, but we also... Mm -hmm. The vast majority of dog owners yeah, the, do pick up exactly, right Exactly, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions at all? Um, can I ask about the <coughs> building that's going on behind the old bailey? Um, yes, I think I might ask Fred to say one or two words on that, if you don't mind. In what respect? The, the so building, what the, whether it's going ahead or whether well, it's Well, I know they've well, withdrawn their application. Yes. Right. As and the, I, know, I think they've put in another application. Yeah which I couldn't access. It did come up it, on... It's not, it's no. not there yet. Um, I spoke to the accountants to find out why it had been withdrawn, and there was um, a few issues with the layout of the site. So um, the applicants withdrawn it, and there will be another one going in that, that will sort of be more agreeable to the planning officer. I did ask, obviously, from when you spoke, um, about whether there was any risk of sort of two-storey buildings rather than the bungalow, and she said she didn't see any issues like that, so it, it sh what comes back should still be done. Well, can I just say now, to add to the three-piece suites and the fridges that we've got there, we've now got a live sheep. <coughs> and, 
Well, my neighbour next door, who has got no fence between the properties, she looked out and said, there's a sheep roaming around now. Well, there's no grass, so I don't know what the sheep's feeding on. But all the, the stuff they're dumping, we do have a rat problem. Where are they dumping it? Is it actually... It's within their in property. Right, so... Yeah. so um, but... I mean, do I get in touch with the RSPCA? Because what are they feeding it on if there's no grass? Well, well again, this is just a personal thing. I mean, if you think there's a, an animal that might well, be in danger, then that, that's But are you allowed to have livestock on you yeah. in, in a residential mm. area? Mm. Mm. I mean, we did have a horse there. I think uh, last year, the year before. Yeah. 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 So, I think it's, sheep it's probably worth us talking to the yeah. environmental yeah. about the rats yeah. and things. Oh, then, yeah. then perhaps we could talk about the sheep yeah, and see what they say not, on that. It's not just oh, the rats sure. on our end, but the lady who lives in, I only know the dog people, it's Badger's mum. The rats are coming into her garden, drinking out of her bird bath. Oh, I know that. Yeah. 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 But they, okay, well, the what we, what we, they might be leaving pellets for it because they feed them pellets. Let's just get a word with the environment. <coughs> yeah. In terms of the rubbish, obviously, if the rubbish goes onto the public highway, then if you could notify yeah, let the me office, know straight away. and we will get in contact with Maidstone and it'll be removed within 48 hours. And is there anything you can do to the, make the builders sweep up? Because the, the mess down the road mm. is coming out, when they're coming out with their lorries, yeah. it's right the way down Church Road. Um, yeah, it is. Well, to, to, to me, I went to a meeting last night at the council, all about enforcement. Yeah. And I must say, over the months of December and January, this is happening all over the place. Mm. Ideally, what these building sites should have is washers, so that the wheels get washed you know, before they actually leave the site. That is not happening. Um, but what if, if there is any more issues over the next month or so, I think any of us would be within our rights just to go and speak to the site agent, site manager, and say, look at the state of your roads. Really, it should be KCC that are doing it. The KCC are not doing no. it. They should be doing it at the moment because of resources, etc. But I think that if you actually, or even if you saw it and noticed it and you thought it was dangerous, approach the site manager. <coughs> We'll, in the first instance, we'll, but, but we'll, yeah. we'll have a look at that as well. I did see uh, tonight, coming out of Crest Nichols, I mean, they were dropping mud the size of buckets yeah. tonight. Yeah. 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 And there was blokes with shovels in the middle of the road, dicing with death, uh, tidying, trying to tidy up. And yeah. The man of mess they are leaving down there. Well, no, they have a sweeper and everything, but they haven't got a wheel wash or anything. No, no. Well, well, see, this was one of the things that was mentioned last night, and I was talking. I mean, it got quite heated this part because they said that Preston and Preston are making £185 million pounds a year, and they're not prepared to put a few mm. bob back into some wheel washes, yeah. you know, at the entrances, because it can cause accidents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we, what we're here about is okay, it doesn't look particularly nice, but we don't want somebody in our neighbourhood, maybe somebody a lot closer to that. You know, be a car to skin and go up on the pavement well, because of it's it. Or anyone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just wrong. But as I say, I think we are within our rights, all of us, if we see the issue, to approach a site agent and say, look, you know, this is. I have spoken yeah. to Chris Nicholson three times now. Yeah. They don't respond. Yeah. No, they're not very good at no. communication. Well, well, I think the thing after that is a, an email to enforcement at Maystone. Yeah, or oh, oh, yeah. KCC. Think, as well, as well yeah. but no you're absolutely right it's, it's not right and there's no you know I could perhaps talk out a turn and say they're not really interested in the public they're just interested in picking up the money once it's done sorry Martin was you going to say something I was going to say um, um, if it helps I'll, I'll make moves to contact highways myself yes um, and then hit it from two directions yeah, so yeah. that would be wonderful if you could do that that's, that's <coughs> Okay, is there any other questions? No, okay, if we can just, the minutes. 
because I guess what? Oh, oh, sorry, Derek, I really missed you out. <laughs> oh, but I mean, that's a good start. Isn't it? You're still smiling. <laughs> I told you, at some stage in the evening, the was going to be upset with me. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, on behalf of the Mason Borough Council, thank you for inviting me to the Harwich and Parish Council meeting. And thank you for allowing me to speak about my chosen subject. I should be so lucky. Well, I was going to talk about Kylie Minogue, but thought better of it. Maybe another time. <laughs> Suffice it to say, she was at her best when she was there on her showgirl, the greatest hits tour. <laughs> So I was elected as the Mayor of Mason on the 21st of May 2016. I had been the Deputy Mayor from, 2000, from May of 2015. In Maidstone, uh, the Mayor is elected for one year, so your time could yeah. come. <laughs> uh, mayors in different... Oh. Yes. 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 Uh, mayors in different towns or boroughs in Kent can serve for longer and I know of uh, some elected to serve for up to five years. But I can assure you that one year is long enough. Uh, it's been a real privilege and an honour for me to be the Mayor. I shall, remember, I shall remember long after my time as Mayor some of the superb places that I've been to. And it's really the people that you meet, the wonderful people that you meet. So many volunteers and everything. Um, one of my first engagements was to Buckingham Palace. I did see the Queen, but I'm not sure she saw me. <laughs> but still, it was a great experience. I will not mention every event and engagement that I attended, but I will mention just a few of them. It was most uh, fortuitous that the Queen had her official 90th birthday during my time as Mayor, which gave me the opportunity to hold an event at Leeds Castle. Uh, this was to celebrate her birthday, and I was able to invite other mayors and dignitaries. Leeds Castle is, as you are all aware, the real jewel in Maidstone, and arguably in Kent. I was fortunate that the weather was kind on the day, and everyone enjoyed themselves. We had a guided tour and talk about the castle, a falconry display, and canapes in the garden with a glass of wine, a wonderful memory and an opportunity to toast and give cheer to our Queen Elizabeth for her long reign over our blessed country. In 2016, I opened the 49th World Custard Pie Championship. <laughs> this was in Cox Hill. Yeah. And awarded the prizes to the winners, the Custardiers. They did threaten to embrace me with all the things, but fortunately I just got a little bit of custard pie on the chain. <laughs> uh, this championship was started by Richard Hearn, otherwise known as Mr Pastry, and it was also with a former Mayor of Mason, uh, Mike Fitzgerald. Some of you may know him or have heard of him. It was a lot of fun, and a team from Japan had come over to defend the title, which they'd won the previous year. So there's all, uh, I mean, this year is going to be the 50th World Cup of Pie Championship, so there's already been a fair bit of media interest, and I believe the team from Japan will try, well, return and try and win back the trophy, but we will not let them. <laughs> Anyway, I've attended a number of events at schools in the borough. I'm truly amazed at how lucky we are in Maidstone to have such devoted staff and talented children. I mean, some of the performances by the children, some of them could walk into a West End performance straight away. But, that could. but the most moving event in the school calendar, though, was the visit I made with my wife Mary to Five Acre Wood School in the south of Maidstone. This is a special school for children and young people with profound, severe and complex learning difficulties, including autistic spectrum disorder. I did not know what to expect, but what I witnessed was true devotion and care 
and love for all the children and young people at the school by the teachers and volunteers. I was moved at what the teachers achieved for their students and the love that was reciprocated by the students to the teachers and their carers. And if you ever get a chance to go and visit the school, I would recommend it. The most poignant events are those that commemorate loss of people's lives during the last century in the two world wars and the forgotten war in Korea. Uh, there have been a number of engagements that I have attended and I was given the opportunity to speak at most of these events. Just only last week, I was at the Royal British Legion Kent Annual Conference held in Ed Headcorn Parish Hall. Part of my address, sorry, part of my address included my observation that it is right and correct to commemorate and remember those people who all gave their lives during the war, but it is equally important to spread the message that there has to be an alternative to war and the consequences of going down the pathway that might lead to war. That does not mean that tyranny should be accepted, but the Royal British Legion do a truly wonderful job, both in secure, supporting those who have been affected by war, but also trying to ensure that war is not pursued or entered into lightly. And I also mentioned my visit to Northborough School in Maidstone last year. They were celebrating the many diverse nationalities of pupils in the school. There are 29 different nationalities, and the teachers had invited the pupils' parents to bring in samples of their national food and drink, and for the children to wear their national costumes and bring in an example of their country's history and geography. Well, I must confess that I had a truly lovely and informative day, and when it came to eating, I believe I had almost everything that was there to eat. 